course, has rendered uh, an impressive service in this area for many years. I visited it myself uh, when I was Attorney General and responsible for more directly for these matters. And um, I really want to publicly congratulate those who are responsible for that facility for the excellent work we have continued to do over the years. The local bus service is back to normal after a work stoppage by drivers earlier this morning caused major disruption for commuters across the country. The Transport Board and the Barbados Workers Union have settled the issue which sparked the, the protest by workers at bus depots in St. Michael, St. Philip and St. Peter. Shane Seely has been following those developments. The disruption of the island's bus service started around 5 this morning when drivers who reported for the early shift refused to take any buses on the road, citing several grievances with the management of the Transport Board. President of the Transport Division of the Barbados Workers' Union, Neville Curtin, revealed what led to the work stoppage. The straw that really brought the camel back is that the employee of, of some person, um, they didn't advertise the job of fame, they didn't advertise it externally, and we find that to be very, very disrespectful. We have a lot of pressing matters to deal with, and that is the one that would really add to the situation that really got the workers real, real, real aggressive. In a matter of hours, the effects of the protest could be felt right across the island. In the north, commuters were clearly frustrated. Transportation in St. Lucie is already horrible, it's not good enough, and added to this, we can't get to work. I would take the ABC bus on mornings, but now the strike, I have to take a bus go to Bridgetown and then take a bus to Wilde. It's a lot of pressure on me, I know I get school extremely late. I have a lot of assignments to hand in, including a test today, and I really need to get to school. Coming on to midday, BWU General Secretary Tony Moore arrived at the board's Weymouth headquarters giving her full support to the action taken by workers. But shortly after, the drivers got behind the wheel of their buses and were back to work. Ms. Moore met with the management for just over an hour and emerged from the meeting announcing that the matter had been settled. We've been able to resolve the issues that inspired the action that we experienced this morning. And as you can see behind you, and in front of you, there are buses back on the road. We are happy that um, we have been able to reach this point where the traveling public would not be able to suffer any further inconvenience. And while both parties agree that there are still outstanding issues to be dealt with, Transport Board General Manager Sandra Ford says she's satisfied with the outcome. I met with the management team and we looked at the concern, the particular concern that was raised this morning. And we have also dealt, as Ms. Moore said, the General Secretary, we've also looked at other issues that are outstanding, which we intend to resolve or at least meet in the next um, couple of weeks to try to see how best we can resolve those other outstanding matters. Now, some of the bus drivers did express concern about not being paid for the day. When I put the question to General Manager Sandra Ford, she said, it's an internal matter and will be dealt with by the board. I'm Shane Tilly for CBC News. 18 people were injured following a two-vehicle collision involving two PSVs, a minibus and a ZR along Maxwell Main Road, Christchurch, pressing the island's mass casualty team into action this morning. Kish Marcinjus was on the location where he filed this report. This was how Maxwell Main Road looked following the accident. Emergency crews were busy tending to the injured, whether on the van, the ZR, on stretchers, or in the makeshift treatment tent. The accident took place at about 10 minutes to 8. The Barbados Fire Service, the Police Force, the Barbados Defence Force, the Rover Response, along with doctors from the Queen Elizabeth Hospital were among the mass casualty team. Among the passengers were five children, all under the age of 10 years old. They did not complain of any injuries. Assistant Superintendent attached to the Police Southern Division, John Maxwell, briefed the media on the extent of the injuries. Five were considered to be serious and the others were treated as minor. Um, we had a team of four doctors from the QEH. There were seven ambulances, five from the QEH and two from the BDF. Uh, 
In addition to that, we had a number of police officers who sought to protect the scene of the accident, which, is, which was classified as a mass casualty situation, given the number of persons who were injured. The accident forced the closure of the road for a couple of hours. Overall, Superintendent Maxwell, who oversaw the operation that lasted close to three hours, was pleased with the response from the several agencies in this mass casualty event. Just before I came here, I had a debrief and they expressed satisfaction, general satisfaction with the responses of the respective agencies. So we are happy that we were able to respond timely and to provide the service that it was required to, in, for those persons who had been injured in this accident. Kishmar Sanjis, CBC News. We'll have more news after the break, but first we want to get your take on this question. Do you believe enough care and attention is being exercised by motorists on the roads? Text yes or no to short code 8111. You'll have the results at the end of the news. When you need space to grow, there's nothing like the home you own. Let Scotiabank open the door for you with competitive rates and support every step of the way. Visit us today and discover what's possible. said local football was just a kid's game. Hello again and welcome to Extra Time. Join Andy Akili Thornhill for comprehensive coverage of local and international football on Extra Time. Brought to you by the Barbados Football Association. And remember it's quite alright to whet your football appetite. Extra Time, Wednesdays at 8.30pm on CBC TV 8. Make no mistake when you're looking for the number one source of the latest business news in Barbados, the region, and beyond. It has to be The Bottom Line, produced and presented by me, Ryan Broom, every weekday morning on CBC's 94.7 FM at 7.50 a.m. It comes to you with the kind compliments of the Barbados Workers' Union Cooperative Credit Union Limited, reminding you to save smart and borrow smarter. So remember, make it your business to tune into The Bottom Line. The best source for business news on the radio. Start your weekend early with Q in the Community Thursday and Saturday. This Saturday, Q in the Community will be at the Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union Limited, Belmont Road. From 11 a.m., come for dancing, karaoke competition, and lots more. It's a Q weekend, sponsored by Stag, the official bear of Q in the Community, and Jewers Whiskey. Tune in to 100.7 FM or join our Facebook page for more details. We now turn to news from Parliament where a suggestion has emerged that government revisit the laws governing possession of illegal drugs. Attorney General Adriel Brathwaite says incarceration is not the only way to solve problems relating to substance abuse. He says the approach has resulted in a stark increase in the prison population at Dodds. At, at Dodds, where you have 900 inmates, I am told at least 180 of them are actually mental health cases. They're actually mental health cases that, that in fact, that what they needed was treatment as opposed to incarceration. But do we have the, the, the resources um, to address this issue at this point in time? We have to do it step by step. But at least I can say this, that this government recognizes that there's an issue and recognize that we have to address it. The Attorney General also defended the DLP's performance in the healthcare sector. At no point in time that I can remember, has we, have we ever been able to provide 
all the resources for the psychiatric hospital or the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. No point in time. Indeed, I challenged the Minister of Health. I said to him, I need you to do your research and let Barbadians know that, that in fact, that over the last eight or nine years, that we have continuously put more money into the healthcare system than the other administration. Minister of the Environment, Dr. Dennis Law, says there are many cases of misdiagnosis in the healthcare sector. Referring to certain cases at the psychiatric hospital, Dr. Law notes there are some instances where people who do not have mental illnesses were admitted to the institution. In some cases, he says these patients often mimic the behavior of others. Persons should not be sent to a uh, psychiatric institution because there's no room at the institution that most suitably suit their condition. Should not. And I know and I agree again with the member for St. Michael East. I have seen persons who have left communities identified as going through stress, not feeling well, talking to themselves, talking aloud. I have seen them left their communities and go down to the psychiatric hospital and return to their communities like zombies. And the upper house also focused on mental health issues. Minister of State in the Prime Minister's office, Senator Patrick Todd, says the issue is a national one. He welcomed support from the private sector in dealing with the problem and called for an end to discrimination against the mentally ill. Some people who abuse drugs will need psychiatric attention. They may be schizophrenic, manic, depressive, bipolar. And if they have to get medical, mental intervention at the psychiatric hospital, we should not, as a society, uh, ridicule people with mental illness. It's a condition that could affect any of us, and these are Barbadians too. And I found upon people who think that if you are the child of somebody mentally ill, you got to be mentally ill, or even psychiatrists they believe are mentally ill because they're bold enough to reach out to these people with mental illness. A government senator is of the view that the use and misuse of drugs can be linked to the current crime wave. Reginald Hunt, during his contribution to debate in the Senate on Health Services Amendment Bill 2015, says many countries like Barbados are now grappling with crime of various degrees. We have those persons who are making their confessions before the law court, whether they're using that as a, an excuse or not, but as a terrible excuse to use, that leading them into this direction. And uh, the users, the pushers, the abusers, all of that, the society is now faced. Madam President, what else could be contributing to the wave of crime we are seeing in the Caribbean? Senator John Watson, in his contribution, highlighted statistics on youth unemployment. He wants to see young people at their best productively. Senator Watson says in life it's about choices and he sees schools as the controlled place of discipline. Therefore, parents of today do not know how to guide our children. We have to depend on the school to guide them. And I really would like that to be clearly understood because we put too much emphasis on this thing about the parents has to do this and the parents have to do that and the parents have to do that. And I agree. But I know there are thousands of parents out there who are not capable of managing children. And it is better for us to accept that it is the school's responsibility to nurture and guide our children. Senator Watson wants Barbados to save young people from drugs. He says there must also be a zero-tolerance approach in schools towards anyone caught with illegal substances. Still to come, a look at some of the stories making headlines across the region. But first, a reminder that we want to hear from you on this question. Do you believe enough care and attention is being exercised by motorists on our roads? Text yes or no to short code 8111. The results at the end 